out of your afternoon to um, take a look at the Starship and Panatrack um, integration. Um, we're really excited about it, um, and we're excited to show you. So with that, we'll just go ahead. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a little intro on V Technologies in case you're not familiar with our company. Um, we have been specializing in shipping solutions since 89. That's all we really do at V Technologies um, is provide um, a way for customers to easily get their shipments out the door. We have quite a few years of um, extensive knowledge in the GP product. Um, and we've built relationships with many carriers, both on the parcel and the LTL side, as well as related applications, such as the Panatrack solution and EDI providers. We have um, thousands of customers using Starship um, to help gain, gain efficiencies in shipping, and also accounts receivable and customer service. And we'll show you a little bit about um, how we can help you get your shipments out the door today. Pam, are you on? Yep, I'm on. Uh, we've been in business, as Adrian had pointed out, since 1996. Our Panatracker GP product, uh, which is directly integrated to Microsoft Dynamics, is a um, uh, has been in the in the market since 2004. We have solutions for inventory and fixed assets, um, and we'll be showing you some of the uh, one of the key features of our inventory solution with the integration with uh, Starship, um, and that's what we'll be showing uh, next. So um, what I'm going to be uh, displaying for you, or what I'm going to be pointing out with you today is um, the integration with um, the uh, Starship solution. Our solution works on a mobile computer, similar to the one that you're seeing over to the right of your screen. Um, and basically, we're using the barcode technology and the ability to be able to capture transactions at the point in time that you're handling that inventory. As you can see over to the left, I have some examples of just some empty boxes. And one of the suggestions we use for this solution is we want to identify what's packed in each specific box. So what do we recommend is potentially getting pre-printed serialized IDs, shipping box IDs that you can apply to your boxes to be able to scan in the inventory into. And I'll be showing you that on the handheld. So um, over to the left also now that I just pulled over onto my screen is the actual in the handheld itself that I'm actually using. Um, it's on an interface that I'm able to provide you the ability to see what I'm doing up on the screen for you. And this is basically our orders main menu screen. And we're going to be working with the fulfill order. And I do want to point out just a couple other features. I want to keep this fairly simple to start out with. But with not only the fulfill order, we do have the ability to do batch picking. In other words, grouping orders, uh, multiple orders to pick at one time. And then we can also do a second verification, and the pack process can actually happen at that point in time. To kind of simplify things, I'm going to be using our fulfillment process that's going to pick and pack the order um, at the same time uh, using that shipping box technology that I just uh, discussed with you. So the first thing I'm going to bring up is our order list. And we have a lot of ways of being able to display the orders. And I'm just going to be scanning an order um, to be able to pull up the order I'm going to be picking. And it's going to then represent and display for you the list of all the items I need to pick. We have a little imp additional information on here, including uh, what uh, is there my available quantities in Dynamics. It's also going to be able to sort based on uh, bin location and the various different things there. So I'm going to just start with my first item. And I'm going to go into my pick screen. And I'm going to go ahead and scan that item that I'm validating I'm picking the correct item. And I'm going to get to my slide. I'm going to be actually going to uh, enter this stuff into my first shipping box. So I'm going to again scan the item, confirm the item I'm scanning, uh, enter in my quantity. And then I'm going to be able to scan that shipping box ID that I'm, this is what I'm uh, uh, putting that inventory into. Now I'm going to go to the next item. This is going to be a serial tracked item. So we do support serial and lot tracked inventory. Again, I'm going to scan the item to validate I'm picking the correct item, scan my serial number and the box that I'm uh, going to put that item in. Go to the next serial number, scan the item, the box I'm putting it in. Now that box is full, so I'm going to go to my next box. And oops, there we go, <laughs> next box. And so I'm going to scan my next serialized item. And I'm going to be putting in shipping box number two here. And we'll do a few of those uh, 
additional serial numbers into those shipping bags. So you can see with the, the uh, scanning capability, we do get a lot of accuracy. Um, if there's any problems, any issues, we'll present error messages to the user. Now we'll go on to my next item. And so next, we'll go ahead and scan that item. Enter in my quantity. Again, shipping box number two still has room in it, so I'll put it in there. And then uh, we'll go to my final item. And I still have a little bit of more room in that box, so I'm going to be able to enter in a few more items in that box. Um, scan in my shipping box. And then I'm going to then uh, go to my next box. Now I'm going to scan that item one more time. Enter in my quantity and my last shipping box. Now that I'm all complete with that order pick, we'll come back and you'll notice that all my line items are identified as being picked complete. I'm going to now be able to submit this order to go back to Dynamics. So I'm going to just hit my Submit button. It's going to process that um, and send that in details back to Dynamics. And then we've got the confirmation everything was good to go. And now I'm going to go to my next screen, which is going to tell you what we've just updated as part of our solution, as part of that submit. So first of all, we updated the quantities fulfilled. We updated all the serial details that were captured on the line item for those for that order. And then we've also updated the batch ID to indicate that everything was picked complete. If I didn't pick everything complete for this order, I can have another batch ID to indicate that there was a partial pick. We do also have the option to automatically print some packing lists. So at that point in time, if you want to go ahead and print packing lists, you can do so. Um, that's something you can also do as part of the Starship process as well. And now that I've got these my three boxes, the other information that we've sent, I've submitted all the details of that pick down to that box level and exactly what's in each of those boxes to a shared table infrastructure that we share with, uh, with Starship so that they can then grab that information to be able to then to pro to accurately process your shipping uh, part of the solution. So I'm going to now turn it back over to Caroline so that she can go ahead and show you the shipment. So um, Pam just packed up <clears throat> three boxes with various information using the um, Panda Tracker GP application. And what we're going to show you now is what you need to do in Starship to automate the shipping of these packages. So as Pam pointed out, she had some license plates that um, were just little stickers that were um, associated to the boxes. So in um, Starship, in this um, packed sales transaction that we now have um, in conjunction with uh, the Panda Tracker solution, the um, shipper can just scan that barcode directly into Starship, and Starship will come up with all the information. Now this can be either um, done um, in order, out of order, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and put the, actually the third box in up on my screen. And you'll notice what happened is Starship retrieved all of the header level information from the GP order. And in conjunction, it picked all the packaging information that was stored in those tables that Pam had mentioned. So here's my um, header level information in our preview area on the left-hand side of our screen here. Um, you'll see the sender as well as the recipient coming over. And down here at the bottom of the Starship screen, you'll notice the packaging view where we have those three boxes. And we're actually actively on that um, box that we scanned. So this would be the license plate number uh, with the 1003. If I expanded um, to look at all the items that are in these boxes, um, you'll be able to see that here's um, the box as well as the item level information. And so we can just um, get all that in information. It really can help from um, international or BOL shipments uh, where we can print out and automate uh, the documentation in those two cases. So the other thing that you can do from the ship screen, if you wanted to, you can do a rate shop. Um, Starship will go out to all the various carriers and rate the shipment that we have and then be able to display that all in one place for you. So you'll notice here that Starship translated the ship via that was on this order to UPS three-day select. However, um, we do have USPS and FedEx as options in Starship right now. So if I wanted to, I could select one of the um, methods here that may be less expensive than going three-day. Or I can just keep the translation um, based on what I've set up in Starship. 
So when I'm ready to um, ship my next box, then I'm going to go ahead and process this one. And now you'll see that um, this is a what we can call the smart label in Starship. It's going to be um, an 8.5 by 11 sheet that will have the packing list on one side, as well as the shipping label in a die cut area of the second side. So the shipper can then place the shipping label directly on the box and put the packing list right inside. The packing list is going to have the item level information that was defined using the Panda Tracker GP solution. And now I'm ready to enter my next license plate number. So let's try her, um, Pam's first package here. Um, and once I enter that in, we're going to be um, grabbing this license plate, 1001. You'll notice also on my packaging tab that there is um, this SSCC number that's being generated by Starship. Starship can print the GS1128 label. And we do have um, connections to EDI solutions, such as True Commerce and Redtail. So that can automate your entire um, EDI workflow as well. So let's just go ahead and process this particular um, box, or box two of three. Again, we're going to have the packing list that's going to print the items that were in this box, as well as the related shipping label that will be put on the outside of the box. And my last one should be the 1002. And we can process this. Again, my label with my packing list. And now in Starship, you're basically ready to enter in your next shipment um, and the first license plate for that package. And that's pretty much it. So the combination of Starship and the Panda Tracker GP solution really can simplify the shipping process. Because um, in the past with Starship, we would just bring over header and item level information. And then customers would have to like manually define the the packages. Um, we give them some um, capabilities of um, defining items and boxes through um, mouse, but the barcoding solution really can help automate that process so the shipper does, doesn't have as much um, manual entry on that end. I wanted to just show you really quick um, another area where item level information can be used, and that would be in um, branded, our branded email notification module. Let's just bring up our um, email viewer here. And I'll show you what that looks like. So now you'll see um, in this view that um, I have an email that's been processed by Starship. Um, it's branded to have an, a logo on it, all the ship to information. And in the body of this email, you'll notice that I have all the package information as well as the tracking number that's associated to that package information, and then all the items that are in that package. So the recipient will be able to know right away how many packages they're getting, what's going to be in the boxes. Um, so when they are um, ready to receive these back boxes, they'll have all the information ahead of time um, to know what's coming where. Um, other things about the email notification um, that Starship provides is um, you can, you can not only brand it, you can put hyperlinks in it, a lot of marketing wrapped around it, which um, customers will like, because uh, you can send them back to your website. Maybe you have a, a customer portal where they can log in and put their information. So you could pull all that information into this email and send them right back to your website. It also gives you a consistent message across all carriers and modes. So Starship can send this exact same um, email for UPS, FedEx, Post Office, as well as your LTL carriers. And then you can also attach shipping documents, such as um, BOL, commercial invoice. Uh, any shipping document that you define on this template can be included. The other big thing with this email notification is that it will um, send these emails out as you're shipping, or it can. Uh, so as soon as the shipment is processed, this email can actually go out, and the recipient will have access to the tracking information immediately. Um, you can also set the email notification to go out at specific times or in intervals. Um, there's a lot of flexibility left around that. So in addition to getting all the output from um, an email and um, packing list and shipment label perspective, Starship will also update the sales transaction on the original order. So let me just go into um, sales transaction entry real quick and just show you what Starship can do from that perspective. Um, 
So the original order, I believe, was order 1110 PM. Let's type that in. So there's my order. Um, this is the order that Pam originally scanned in through the handheld and did all the packing on. Um, well, Starship can, um, after you've packed it up, we can update the notes with the um, detail, a little more detail about the, um, the shipment. This is all user-definable information here, so um, you can define exactly what you see in your note file if you'd like. We can also update the batch ID to shipped or whatever you um, wish that to be so that they can uh, your front office or um, invoicing staff can see that these particular this particular order has been shipped. Um, and then in the user defined area, we can update the tracking number. So these go back to uh, the tracking number table inside of GP. And then the freight charges. These freight charges can include customizable handling fees. Starship also has something called freight rules that will allow you to define conditions, how and when the freight actually gets updated on the GP transaction.